So today's episode is going to be a lot of fun because it's an Ask Me Anything, A-M-A. And this was actually sent via Instagram by Omar T, previous podcast guest actually on the show, phenomenal wholesaler, outstanding individual. So thank you, Omar, for sending it in. And Omar sent me a question basically about how he lost a really big, fat, juicy deal. And if you've ever been uh, listening to this podcast or you're a regular listener, you know I'm a big fan of fat, juicy deals. If you want a profitable wholesale business, if you want a cash machine that spits off cash month after month after month, without your personal day-to-day -day involvement, you are in the right place. So Omar, I'm going to read your question and then I'm going to answer it for our listeners. Hi, Todd. Hope all is well. I recently lost a deal to another wholesaler. It was a fat, juicy deal, approximately 60K assignment, which I just can't get over it. Hey, I know it sucks. <laughs> it was an online PPC divorce lead. Seller was ready, but I wanted to create some tension. So I offered 30,000 below what he wanted just to see what happens. And he said, he needs to discuss with X. By the way, I'm reading this text, uh, this this message as it is, okay? Then we concluded the walkthrough and set Friday to do a phone call meeting and finalize the deal. Seller goes MIA on Friday, and Saturday, I get an email they have changed their mind, but in reality, they signed up with another wholesaler despite the fact that they said they weren't working with anyone else and I was the only one they were talking to. Is there any YouTube content you have which talks about how to get contracts signed on highly motivated leads who might be ready to do, do a deal on the first meet. How do I go about those? Am, I'm conditioned to create tension around my negotiations and sometimes lose sight on hot ones. Man, Omar, there's a lot to unpack here. But first of all, I want to congratulate Omar and everyone listening to this on doing fat, juicy deals. This business is made to be a high margin business. I don't care how many deals you do. This business is not about who can flex and say, I do 200 deals a year or 100 deals a year. And if, by the way, if you're doing 100 or 200 big, fat, juicy deals, congratulations, I'm happy for you. But in this market, uh, deals are at a premium, right? And so this business is still the best business that, uh, in my opinion, you could possibly be in. I just love, love, love wholesaling real estate, uh, but you got to create margin, right? And that's by doing big, fat, juicy deals. And sometimes when we toe the line of doing big, fat, juicy deals, guess what? We're going to lose the deal. So how do you do this balancing act, right? Well, the first thing is, Omar, I'm really proud of you. And if you're listening to this, anybody else, uh, don't lose sight that you want to do big, fat, juicy deals, all right? The question is, how do you toe the line between getting the contract signed today and or losing the deal to another wholesaler. Okay. So it looks like you did everything right. You met with a seller. You know, the first thing that I would do here is you got to make sure that you're building a high level of rapport. And I talk about this a lot in the no limit selling system. And if you want to know more about that, all right, check out no limit sales system.com. It's my system for locking up big, fat, juicy deals and talking to sellers. But there's three levels of rapport. So most people think that, you know, if they meet with a seller for 15 or 20 minutes and talk about some of the pictures on their wall uh, and talk about the vacation that they went to or a trip or, you know, their kids, that that's enough connection. And that's not, right? You, you are in the problem solving business. And most sellers are really going to appreciate a high level of trust, right? They want to do business with people they know, trust, and like, right? So, Make sure that it's all three of those. So yes, it sounds like you had a high level of level one rapport, but level two and level three, level two is when they teach you something, right? They teach you about one of their hobbies and you move off the topic of the house. Level three is when they give you something, right? So I've given the example of uh, I'm really into tomatoes. And so we built this level one rapport on tomatoes. Number two, I had someone teach me at their house how to uh, basically grow bigger tomatoes, right? By pruning them in a more effective way. And then three, she actually gave me the seller, this giant basket of tomatoes, which was awesome. And so we had built that high level of rapport. And that was a very, very, very big deal for our company. And so the first step, I'm not saying you're not doing this, but the first step to check the box here is make sure you're really, really, really building a deep level of rapport. Why? Because if the seller, for whatever reason, decides that they want more, number one, they might tell you, 
Uh, number two, but they will feel a sense of guilt over going with somebody else, right? They want to do business with you. And so you'll hear them maybe hesitate, but at the very least, you should get a phone call or they'll be upfront with you, at least if you're using the no limit selling system appropriately, right? They have to be able to trust you. So it sounds like you were close on a deal, $60,000. And I agree. Uh, you want to create tension in your deal. So everybody listening to this, when a seller gives you a number, and let's pretend like it's a good number, you don't want to accept it right away. Because the seller, if you accept it, it's going to get spooked, and they're going to think now they could have gotten a better deal. So you want to slow it down. And then you want to make the seller fight for that number, even, even if the number is good. So it sounds like you did a good job there. But you remained uh, just a little bit too low, right? Sounds like you were making, uh, you know, 60,000. You try to add another 30, which by the way, if you're doing a big fat juicy deal, I've got no problem with that. The issue is you left the house, right? Without the contract. And that is a big no-no, right? When you've got a motivated seller, you've got a hot lead. You don't want to leave that house without a contract. So what I would have done in this case scenario, it sounds like you were off on price. I would have done the give up. The give up is when you act like, hey, you know what? It sounds like maybe we're kind of far apart here, but that's okay. And you go back to building that level two and level three rapport. You build a friend, you build, you you have the relationship, and you know you talk about what they're gonna do after they sell the house, right? It sounds like in this case, there was a divorce. You could talk about what life looks like after the divorce, right? Where they're gonna move, what they're gonna do. Um, and again, this is only if you know there's going to be good feelings about moving on, right? But whatever it is, get them to move on. In that case, maybe there's some kids in the situation and maybe they're going to take their kids to Disneyland after the divorce to kind of help them forget about this. But um, focus on that. And then right before you leave, you say, hey, you know, I know we weren't going to do, but what, what actually would have gotten the deal done, right? And because you kind of release some of the pressure there, right? You built more trust, you build rapport. They want to do business with you. You can re-engage that conversation and get the contract. You never want to leave a house, especially when you've got a motivated seller. So Omar, phenomenal job. Thank you for sending this in, by the way. And this is a new segment I'm going to do on the show, Ask Me Anything. So feel free, if you're listening to this, to hit me up at Instagram. That's the best place to send a question. Uh, at Todd Toback, send a message, and I'll try to answer it on one of my shows. Remember, I talked about the No Limit Selling System. In any case, if you don't have the system if you don't know how to talk to sellers, if you want to do bigger deals, you've got to buy it. The price is embarrassing low, no, embarrassingly low. Go to nolimitsalesystem.com and I will talk to you on the next episode.